Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wasserman and today we are looking at Homelinks 2.2 area of a rectangle. Uh, let's take a look at problem number one. And it says draw a rectangle that has length of nine units and width of four units. So as you can see there's a, a grid of lines set up for you conveniently. So what you would want to do is just count off nine intersections or nine squares. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I've made a line that is nine squares across, so a length of nine. So then I'm going to make a line that intersects at a perpendicular 90 degree angle of four squares down. That's the width. And I'm just going to complete my square or rectangle, I should say. Okay, so now I have my uh, rectangle that has a length of nine and a width of four. So nine units, or nine U, and four units, or four U. Now the equation for finding the area of a rectangle is actually written right below the space right here says the formula is length times width to find the area. Okay, so in order to find the area of this rectangle, I'm just going to multiply 9 times 4 equals, we'll say, A. Okay, so what are we doing when we're finding area? Well, uh, in Unit 1, we learned that uh, to find the perimeter of a rectangle, we had to measure the four sides. So the perimeter is like, uh, how much fencing would I need to fence in a yard? Uh, when we're dealing with area, what we're actually doing is we're counting square units, or counting square inches, yards, feet, meters, kilometers, whatever. So what I want to know when I'm finding the answer to an area problem is, how many squares live on the inside of this rectangle? So if I were to color this in yellow, that would be one square unit. So if I multiply 9 times 4, what I get is 36. That's a, a multiplication fact. So if I have a length of 9 and a width of 4, my area is going to be 36 square units. So if I were to go back into this rectangle and count every single one of these squares, I would have 36. And by doing so, the 36 squares fill in the interior of the rectangle. That's the difference between perimeter and area. When I'm looking at the area, I want to know what's on the inside. When I'm thinking about perimeter, I want to know what's on the outside. Not the best coloring I've ever done, but you get the picture. So that's what we're doing here when we are finding the area of a rectangle. We are just multiplying the length times the width. So for problem number three, it says that the length of this uh, rectangle, which is not drawn to scale, is 8 feet, and the width is 6 feet, so 8 times 6 is going to give me 48 square feet. Now the only difference between the problem number 1 and problem number 3 is that uh, there's no grid of squares to help you illustrate or picture uh, all the little square feet that live on the inside. But if you were to divide this rectangle into strips of one foot lengths, like so. And of course, I'm drawing this freehand, so it ain't too pretty. And then if I were to draw columns, and again, this is not measured exactly, but again, you're getting the idea. Uh, if I were to count the number of squares, I would have 48 squares on the inside of this rectangle. That's where I get my area of 48 square feet.
And that's it, friends. That's the formula. Once you understand the formula and, and can tell the difference between area and perimeter that when we're measuring for area, that we're measuring the inside, the contents of the, the rectangle or whatever shape we're finding the area of, then this will come real easy. Lastly, friends, I know that sometimes it's easy to skip the practice down at the bottom, but these are all review of skills that you should have mastered from the first unit, but mastery comes with practice. So let's take a look real quick. Uh, I'll do number eight because it's set up as a number sentence, first of all, and it's also flip-flopped the uh, space for the answer with the algorithm for the subtraction problem. Uh, when you have an equal sign, like so. All they're telling you is that both sides of the equation should equal out to be the same. So whatever I subtract, 1,729 minus 623, my answer should be the equivalent amount. So let's go ahead and subtract that. So I'm just going to rewrite the second number underneath the first, and I'm going to line up those place values. Oh, this one is pretty easy because once I have the place values in place in a vertical column, I can see that there's no regrouping involved. I can just straight up subtract 9 minus 3 is 6, 2 minus 2 is 0, 7 minus 6 is 1, and then I bring down the 1 in the thousands. So my answer is 1,106. Now, if I wasn't sure about my answer being correct, all I would have to do is add my second number back to my answer. Let's see if I came up with my first one. 6 plus 3 is 9, 0 plus 2 is 2, 1 plus 6 is 7, bring down the 1,000. Yep, it works. If you have any questions about area or perimeter or subtraction or anything mathematical, please reach out to your math teacher. Otherwise, we will talk again soon. Thanks.